Welcome to the second part in the series on using Backbone.js with Rails. Now our objective in this series is to make this application here for raffling off prizes. And you can add new entries and then draw a random winner out of the entries. You could draw multiple winners as well. There's even some validation here. If we try to add an entry without a name, it'll give us an error saying name can't be blank. Now we've already started building this application in the first part, so let me quickly review what we did there. First, we generated a new Rails app with a front page that simply says loading. And from here, our backbone application takes over, which is inside of this raffler.js file. This init function is triggered when the page loads, which ends up generating a new entries router and then visiting it. So here's what our entries router looks like. Now this ends up creating a new entries collection and then fetching and filling that collection with data from our database through our Rails application here. And then this router ends up rendering the entries index with that collection and then placing that inside of the container div. So our entries index view is right here. This basically ends up rendering a template, passing in that collection of data. And the template is inside of here. Basically, it just loops through all the entries in the collection and then displays the name for each one. So this means when we visit our Rails application, it ends up filling the page with the entry records. So if this doesn't seem familiar to you, be sure to watch the first part to get up to speed. So we'll continue off from this point. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is add a form at the top here for adding new entries. And I'll add that form to the backbone template right above the point where I'm listing out the entries. And I'll just paste this in because it is quite simple. It's just a HTML form here with a text field called new entry name and a submit button for adding it. And the form is called new entry. And reload the page. And there's my form, which I've already styled off camera. But right now it doesn't do anything. I could try to add an entry and it just reloads the page. Instead, we want to capture the submit event and then add the entry through the application. Now events in Backbone are often handled inside of the view. So we'll do this inside of the entries index view here and we need to listen to the submit event on our form. And Backbone provides a special way of defining events and handling them, and that is by setting this events property on a view. And in here, you need to specify the name of the event you're listening for, in this case, the submit event, and then followed by a space, and then the element you want to listen to that event on, in this case, the new entry form. And then the value for this should be the name of the function that is triggered when this event happens. So we'll call it create entry. And that will be a function defined on this view called create entry. And this takes an event parameter. And this we want to first ensure that the actual event doesn't happen. So the form doesn't really get submitted. And we can call prevent default, just like we would when listening to events in jQuery to ensure that the form doesn't get submitted. And then we can create that new record through our collection, just like I showed in the last episode, by just calling collection.create and then passing in the attributes. So I'll set the name attribute to the actual name value, which is inside of the new entry name field, and just take the value of that. So let's give this a try. I'll insert a new entry here and click add. And when I do this, it's going to submit a post request in the background to our Rails application to create the record but the front end here doesn't look like anything happened. But if I reload the page here, there's my new entry in the list. So we'll need some way to update the view when new records are added. Now we could update the view directly inside of this create entry function, but a general practice in Backbone is to only focus on changing the model data and then using callbacks to update the view. So this means, notice we have this reset callback that we created in the previous episode, which re-renders a view, when we fetch the collection data from our Rails application. So we can make another uh, binding event callback here for uh, the add event, which will re-render the view when we add a new record. So let's give this a try again. I'll create a new entry. Now when I click on add, it's going to update this view directly in place and fill in that new record. Now this solution works okay, but every time we add a new entry, it's going to re-render the entire template. So this means it'll re-render the form and all of the other entries as well. And usually it's best to just render the portion of the template that changes, in this case, appending a new item to this list. But to do this, we'll need some way to render out an individual entry. And we can do that by creating a separate entry view, which handles the rendering of a single entry. 
So I'll create a new view here titled entry.js.coffee. This will be quite similar to the other view, so I'll just copy and paste this content here into here, and it's just called views.entry, and it extends from backbone view, and the template, let's just call it entry, and I'll remove the event bindings here, and just render it out. For now, I'll just render out the straight template. Now I'll still need to create this new entry template, so I'll do that here. Make a new file called entry.jst.echo. And for now, I'll just say entry goes here. But this means inside of our index template, we need to use that entry template here instead of looping through the entries. So I'm just going to delete all those and just identify this, call it entries, so that way we can append the entries into this list. All right, so now going to the index view, we'll need to change the way we render this template because we no longer need to pass in the entries collection into it. We now just need to fill that template with the entries separately. So to do that, we can loop through each of the uh, collection entries by calling each on the collection. And then let's trigger a function. Let's call it append entry. So I'll just define that append entry function here and an entry object gets passed in as an argument. Now what we need to do for each entry is create a new entry view. So we can call new raffler.views.entry, which is the view that we defined earlier. Then we need to render this out by appending it to the entries list. So that we could just call append here, call view render dot element. That will add it to the list. All right, I'll try this out by reloading this page here. And we do get an entry goes here for each a record, but for some reason it's not displayed in a list. Now you can see that if I inspect the HTML source, I have my entries list here, but each item in it is just wrapped in a div tag, and that's the default wrapper for backbone views. Now I can change the wrapping element that's used by going into my entry view here and set the tag name option to li to use a list item. And now when I reload this page, hey, it looks correct. Now we just need to fix this placeholder text so it displays the actual entry name. To do this, I'll need to pass in the entry model to the view when we create it inside of the append entry function in the index view. So what I can do is pass in an option called model and then just pass in the entry model directly into there. And then inside of the entries view, we can pass that model into our template when we render it, like we did with the collection. I'll just call it entry, then pass in this view's model. And then inside of the template, instead of displaying entry goes here, I'll get the entry's name. All right, now with that change, reload the page here, and there we go. There are the entry's names back in place. So now with that change in place, Whenever we add a new record, instead of re-rendering the entire template, we could just call append entry. That will trigger this function and pass the newly added entry to it, and that means it just appends a single entry to the view instead of re-rendering the entire thing. And I'll try this out by just inserting a new entry here, click add, and then it adds it directly to the bottom. However, it doesn't clear our form here, so we'll need to manage that manually. And I'll do that instead of the create entry function. After we create a new entry, I'll just grab the uh, new entry form, and then the first element in there, I'll just call reset on this. Now that we know how to add entries efficiently, let me talk a little bit about validations, because when someone tries to submit a new entry without providing a name, we would like to present them with some kind of error. Now Backbone does offer support for client-side validations using the validate function. Uh, you can refer to the documentation for details on this, but I won't be covering this here. Instead, I want to focus more on the server-side validations and integration with Rails. Now, if I go to the entry model inside of my Rails app, right now it doesn't have any validations, so let me first add one, a simple validates presence of name. With that validation in place, if I try to add a new record without any name, nothing seems to happen. But if we check out the network activity for this page, you can see that there was a post request to the entries URL, and the response I got back was 422, bad request. And the content contains the error messages in JSON. So I'll be able to parse this out and then display the error to the user using this. Now that response is being generated with the respond with call inside of my controller that I set up in the first part. 
So if you aren't using respond with, you'll need to manually check if there's any validation error on the model and then handle the response in a similar fashion. Now that we know how this error is generated, let's handle this 422 response in our Backbone app and display this error message to the user. Now when the entry is created in the index view, we can pass in some callback functions into here to handle the success or errors that may come from the response. But first, let me clean this up a bit by moving these attributes into a separate variable. And then I can make a success callback function here that will do the same thing as this right here, basically resetting the entry form and then the error callback. I'll have it trigger a separate function called handle error. And I'll define that function. And the options that get passed into here are the entry model and the response object that we can get further information on by calling something like if response.status equals 422, then we know is that validation error. And in that case, I can uh, grab the errors from that response by uh, parsing the JSON. I'll use this jQuery function and I'll just call response.response text, which will be the uh, content of the response and call errors on this. And then I can loop through this errors object because the attribute name will be the key and the messages array will be the value of that errors object. And then I'll just say alert that attribute with the messages, actually just a given message uh, for each message in the messages array because each attribute can have multiple error messages assigned to it. So now let's try this out. I'll reload the page and then click add without a name. Now it says name can't be blank. So then you can display the error message however you want. We do have one issue here though, and that is if we scroll down to the very bottom, you can see there is a blank entry showing up in the collection. If I reload the page, then it goes away. So for some reason, an entry is still being added to the collection. Now the issue is that this collection.create call doesn't wait for the server to respond before it adds that entry to the collection. So if there's a validation error, the entry's already been added to the collection. Now, if we had client-side validation, this wouldn't be so much of an issue, but since we don't, there is an option you can pass in here saying wait and set it to true. So that way it will wait before it actually adds it to the collection until it gets this response from the server. Now, when I try to create an empty entry, I get my validation error, but I don't see any new entries here in the collection because it waited until it got the server response. Now that I've got validations working, it's time to add that draw winner button at the bottom here to select a random winner. So at the bottom of my index template, I'll add a button tag in here with the ID of draw and say draw winner. And then reload the page and there's my button, which I've already stylized. Now it's time to hook it up so it does something when I click on it. And I'll just do this in the same way that I listened to the submit event for creating an entry. I'll just wait for the click event on the draw button. And then when that happens, I'll trigger the draw winner function, which I'll create down here called draw winner. And that takes an event argument, which I can then uh, prevent default behavior on. Now it's a good idea when there's complex logic involved to pass this off to the model or collection layer. So I'll just call collection the draw winner function on there, which I'll need to create. So I'll go to that collection here and then define that draw winner function right in here. Now I've mentioned in part one that we can use the shuffle function on a collection to return a randomized array of records. So I can just grab the first record in here and mark that the winner. And then if there is a winner, let's uh, make him the winner by calling sit on here and set winner to true. And then call winner.save to uh, send a put request to our Rails app and end ending up saving the record to the database. So now clicking draw winner will mark a random winner, but we don't currently display any winner information on this page yet. So I'll do this inside of the entry template where I'm currently just displaying the entry's name. So in here I want to add a span tag with the class of winner and say winner inside of here, but only for entries that are winners. So I'll check to see if the uh, entry and get the winner attribute and see if that's true. And if so, display that tag. Otherwise, we'll just end right there. So now when I reload the page, there's our winner tags, which I've already stylized. But currently, if I select draw winner, it's not going to update the view with the current winner. And I'll do this inside of the entry view where I'm rendering that individual entry. If I uh, create an initialize function here, that'll get triggered 
when this is instantiated, I can call my model and call the on function on here to bind to an event, um, such as the change event in here. And then I can trigger the render function when this happens and make sure it binds to this context of our view object. Now this change event is triggered by Backbone when a model saves. So this will automatically be triggered when we set the winner. So I'll give this a try. Click draw winner here, and you can see it properly updated that given entry instantly. Now we just need to highlight this winner text red for the latest selected winner so that it's easy to spot. Now one way to do this is to trigger a custom event when a winner has been selected. Now you aren't limited to just the events that come with Backbone, you could trigger any event. So we can say trigger, let's have one called highlight. And then in the entry view, we can listen to that highlight event just like we do the change event. And let's trigger a function, let's call it a highlight winner. And then we'll make that function instead of here. And then in here we can take our winner element and then add a CSS class to it called highlight. So this way we can make it look a little bit different. Now we don't want to take every winner element and that's what this will do. Instead we want to take only the winner span element that is inside of this template. And Backbone provides a neat way to do this by calling this dot and then the dollar sign. And in CoffeeScript you can just use the at symbol. So that way it'll only uh, filter out the uh, elements that are within this given view. Now I also need to remove any previously highlighted entries. So I'll do that, I'll call remove class highlight on all other winner elements. So now when I go to click draw winner, it now highlights the winner that was just selected and disables the highlighting when a new winner is selected. Now it's currently possible for a winner to be chosen who is already previously a winner. And you may or may not want to fix this. Um, I won't do it here for the sake of time, but you could just add a bit more logic to the winner selection. However, something I do want to do is move some of this logic into the entry model because notice we're calling a lot of functions on our winner here. And whenever you see that, it's a good idea to move it into the model. And besides, our model is still currently bare. It would be nice to add a bit of logic there. So I'll just copy and paste this. Let's make a function in the entry model called win. And then I'll just define that method in the winner module and just paste it in here. And we want to call these methods on this object instead of going through the winner variable we used before. However, when we go to our application and try this out again, this refactoring actually broke something. It's not working anymore. And if we go to the console, you can see the error there. It says the win function is undefined. Now the issue is that the models that we've been working off of in this collection are not actually entry models. They don't contain the logic that we define inside of this entry model here. To get this behavior, we actually have to specify in our collection what we want to use for the models by passing the model option and telling it to use that specific entry model here. So, so that way it's not using the base model and it has that win function. So now with that fixed, the uh, draw winner behavior is now working again, yay. Next, I wanna talk about preloading data. If you recall in part one, we set up this call to collection.fetch inside of our router. And this loads up the initial uh, entries by making a request to our Rails application. However, this second request can be avoided if we preload the data in the initial request to the page which has that loading text. Now there are a variety of ways that we can do this like I show in episode 324. But here I'm going to use the content tag technique and uh, make a div tag in here with uh, the loading content and then set the ID to container. And then the key here is to pass in a data option and I'm going to make a data entries attribute in here that we just pass in all the entries and that will automatically be converted to JSON for us. So this will do basically the same thing as this other container div, but include that data entries attribute. And now when I reload the page and view the source, you can see we have that data entries attribute with the JSON information for all the entries. And now instead of calling fetch on our collection, we can call reset and supply the data directly from inside of our container, that data entries attribute. And this way it'll be filled up directly pre-populated. And reload the page and it doesn't work. For some reason, well our view is rendering properly, but our entries are not being added to our list. 
Now the issue goes back to how we're rendering the entries in our index view. There after we render the template, remember we call collection.each, and for each of those we're appending the entries. And we're adding these directly to the entries list element. But the issue is that this list element does not exist yet on the actual page because since this is now happening immediately when this view is created and rendered, it's just being rendered within this element and not actually existing on the page in the container. To fix this, we need to change how we access our list of entries and make sure that we always go through this view using the at symbol in CoffeeScript so that way it looks where the entries list within the views element and not on the page directly. However, we have another issue, and that is that this context right here is not this view context, and that is because when we call collection.each and pass it this function, it doesn't maintain this context when it calls this function. To fix this, one option is to pass in this as the second argument into the each call, that way it'll keep that context. So it's always important to be aware of what context your functions are being run under. Now in CoffeeScript, we have another solution for this, and that is to use the fat arrow when defining the function. So this way, it will always maintain this view context wherever this function is called. That means it's no longer necessary to pass this in as a second argument here. Now you may want to do this elsewhere too, such as when you're passing this in as the third argument in here. If you're using the fat arrow, you won't need to do this. All right, so with that fix, now when I reload this page, we get our list of entries back in. Now it's pre-populated and it doesn't have to fetch them through a second request. I want to finish up this episode by talking about routing. So far we've kept everything inside of this index route, but what about this show route that we set up in part one? So far it's gone unused. Now let's say when we click on a specific entry, we want to trigger that show route for that given entry and display more detail about it. Now I'll handle that click event inside of this entry view here at an events call and listen to a click event. I don't need to pass in a second option into here because we're listening on the full element. And let's trigger something called show entry. So I'll define that uh, show entry function. And what we want to happen is that it visits that specific URL and triggers the show route. So to do that, we can call backbone history dot navigate and then pass in the path that we want to go to, in this case, entry slash that given entry ID, which we can get by calling model.get uh, ID. And then if we pass true as a second argument here, it's actually going to trigger that route. So now let's try this out. When I reload this page here and click on a given entry, it now includes an alert dialog box because it's changing the path to go to that specific route. Now I mentioned in part one that there are ways to change this routing behavior so it uses the actual URL path instead of the anchor portion of the URL. To do that, we have to go back to the point where I called history.start in the application and pass in this set option called push state and set it to true. Now when I visit the application again and click on an entry, you can see you get the same effect, but our URL now includes the actual path of it and not as part of the anchor portion in the URL. But this does cause a problem if we try visiting this URL directly. You can see I get this routing error because a Rails application doesn't respond to that given route. To fix this, you may want to add a catch-all route to the end of your Rails router so that it matches anything and just passes that on to the main index action which will load up your Backbone application. So now any path in our Rails app will end up loading a Backbone app because we, you can see we get this dialog box because it visits that specific entry. Now it's just going to show loading right now because we don't have any template that's rendered when accessing this route, but ideally you would have some kind of show template which displays the entry's details. And then you could have a link to go back to the index template which displays all of them. But I will leave that as an exercise for you to do on your own. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this useful.